Edelweiss Mistake history, so a happy anniversary to Edelweiss Mistake 65th. And given that it happens to be um, my and my wife's wedding anniversary, I do have to say happy anniversary to my wife. And I want to point out that when we met in college many years ago, I showed her the, on our first day we met a picture of a Galfest team competition team, and she still went out. <laughs> And happy anniversary, Bob. <laughs> and Karen. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, and we're, we're, we're still doing well. We're going to be playing bells tomorrow at the time of all. So. All right. So you, you may think that the Gal Fest was delayed a year because of COVID. It was actually so I could finish my book. <laughs> Um, part of the uh, uh, plan 
as quote unquote to Napoleon, the Holy Roman Empire dissolved in 1806. And then in 1871 was the unification of Germany, where they really, after the Holy Roman Empire, came back into one um, organized uh, um, country again. And it was really shortly after that we started having the first drop of Rhine being formed. And then, you know, this. Um, you know, Schubert was writing also on Miesbach about just before that time. And it was then uh, sometime before 1925 that Hans Fleming recorded the dance inscriptions I'm providing here. And I say before that because in 1925, the Margareta Fleming published his book. And it, assuming that it was his, his widow, so you know, I'm not quite sure when he recorded these things, but they're definitely before 1925. Getting to the in the life of part of this history, when my dad founded the group, um, George Musbauer, the Aaron Four Poplar Weinfrein, who taught a lot of the original dances starting about 1933, the Weinfrein Newer, or Bart and um, gave old faded copies of this book to my dad, help him to do proper shoe polish, and and so. You know, with that mentorship, my uh, dad eventually became Aaron Fort Pollard and Lance to say many years later. So I, I like that kind of symmetry that, um, you know, handing, handing down those traditions. And this is the way it was done, not necessarily through books, but, you know, from person to person for all these almost thousand years now. Um, 2014, I was lucky enough to find this valuable copy, original copy, uh, online, but in a Austrian antique bookstore and was able to purchase that and started working on the uh, translation. And as important thing to know, I believe in 2020 the copyright expired on the original book. That's why I could republish the whole thing. Um, it's a little unclear. There's also rules that 70 years after the author's death, it was published by his widow. Who do I go by? Good luck for me to try and find when the widow dies. <laughs> Um, so anyways, certainly as of two years ago, I can republish this thing. And so here I have the four parts I just described, translation, instructions, and music, and the updated uh, book. Next, please. So the original book, German only, of course. Um, somewhat rare, it's hard to find this. I think Gavron has, library has one, I have one. There's not many around. So they, they are rare to find. Um, a little hard to read. You see at the bottom right, four-spiel description, scanned right out of the book, and the, don't understand the fractal font, and are used to reading that day after day. Yeah, the, the, the three types of S's, the long S, the short S, and the smart S, and the double S. <laughs> the K that looks like a T, the, you know, everybody complains about the capital P, looks like a B, so anyways, it, it, it's not easy to necessarily read. So even my German, I printed it in a modern file, hopefully it's easier for people to use. Um, the, as I said, uh, some of the instructions were a little hard to map right, from what he says, and this is his notes published by his widow, so it's very, you know, not necessarily a proper grammar, it's very ongoing, so anyways, I, you know, I had to work a bit sometimes to map them, and then just, uh, again, put the music. So what's the same um, is what really the dance content. 16 plotlers and up to four versions of each plotler. So I mean, even back then, there was not this one way to do a plotler. He said, well, you can do this sequence or that sequence. Three nice landlers with um, Wendler figures, um, plus the poplars. Um, fairly complex Steyr and dry Steyr. I like them, but they're probably more complex than you're used to seeing. More complex than describing, and say, the hot sofa picture books I have over here also. Um, as it starts out with a description of Freud's celebration, somebody gets a new pair of letter hose, and somebody, uh, a couple gets married, somebody has a big event. They describe what a celebration is. And it's very interesting, you know, in our club, you know, certainly you get a two liter stiefel of beer and you pass it around. And he describes the ceremony. And one little interesting about his ceremony is that the celebrant has to buy the beer, so there's a little fake fight there to <laughs> drag him in. And anyways, and, and, but this, besides the 
dances, the first couple of sections are some nice general instructions on shoe polish. I'll talk to us about it. Yeah. Shoe polish, and that's a general term, and how to do the polish, how to do the spinning, how to do the leather, all those pieces are in there. Um, so in addition to what it describes the dances, the tone and the way he says it, I think is very interesting to me. When he, in my translation, outpouring of upper Bavarian happiness. I mean, he just enjoys you lovely. You can read, see that from what he says here. Uh, about the dry fire, you know, well, you can't tell when it was, came about, no celebrity or today, no rock star with the music or anything like that. So, but German life created it. Um, don't know when, don't know how, but it came into being and was handed down like well, you know, folk traditions are in that manner. Um, and uh, this is the last part is a quote from what the widow said. He said, you know, the Hans Fleming, the author, his desire was to maintain the way of performing these dances. And I just want to take this, not without a copyright, make it more accessible, continue that tradition. And, you know, the, uh, but basically the book is so great. And it's really, a, you know, he loves through poverty. You can tell when you read his descriptions and you read his introduction. Um, one thing about the Schubauer descriptions are a lot of different plotlers, but very basic components, such as Schlager. And sometimes the missing slaps, I'll explain what that means. I mean, sometimes the such a Schlager only has four or five slaps, and he actually says how, how to do that. Dreyer Schlager, three slap, um, Sprunga, and height, described the height hour and the Tolter Sprunga. What we call a Hoch Sprung today, the Tolter Sprung. Look at the dance description, but it's the same thing. Um, and there's other things, stamps and slapping the floor, and then he uses certain terms. Like if we do a uh, Schnockelbotzer, where we're having a main foot hitting and a second foot echoing, he calls that the Mock So maybe there's some terms we can pick up. What's Mock Clothin? Well, that's what we do to uh, certain dances where we're doing a Stamp sequence and hitting with the left foot. Um, spells uh, that describes uh, spinning, look at drain, literally bell spinning, and he you know, makes a good point about how the girls should make their bells and everything else. Um, on clocks, walk in place, or progressing clone clocks, and then talks about the stepping sh strikes on the ears. And he actually describes some of these things. Interesting. Um, how he describes it. And he also gets a little more description about how to hold the apron. I think I have a little more on that in a, in a bit. But, you know, describe, describes all the parts, unlearns, you know, it's kind of vaults are dead. There's no pivot steps. What does he mean by that? Well, in the waltz, one, two, pivot, you don't do that. It's three separate steps. He describes a proper unlearn in the book. And it's a continuous even rotation. I mean, my, my parents come from a general folk dancing background, and we could tell what nationality people were from the way they did a polka. <laughs> <laughs> and seriously, I mean, we knew Russian groups, you knew Polish groups. You ever see Russians do a polka? They move across the dance floor. They move. <laughs> um, Polish. They hop very quickly in place. What do Germans do? They rotate. <laughs> <laughs> you do a polka, you rotate evenly, and you go around the dance floor evenly. And, and seriously, you can tell nationalities by the way you do a polka. Well, how do you do a lender? Thou shalt rotate. You know? <laughs> how do girls spin? They rotate for rest around the circle. So it's very interesting that, yeah, that he strikes this, but then, yeah, we take it in a broader context. I mean, this is really a traditional German dancing is, is the continuous spin, rotation, continuous spinning. And these are some of the things that the um, introductory section before we talk about really the um, actual pieces of it. This, this is how he describes these types of things in the introductory sections. If you get, read nothing else in German or English as your choice, read those two, three pages. It's very different instructive to me. Next, please. So, um, yeah, so I mentioned Sexual Schlager, and so I'm an and, and, and incomplete, I'm um, full, I got murder my term here, I'm full, Stenigen, der Schweidefeld, Sexual Schlager, links form. Okay, I gotta translate into slaps. What does that mean? Um, well, it, 
it means that second slot is missing. So what do you do here? So this from a slot sequence, you miss the second one, two, four, five slots. So this is the way that we can do the six, the sexual slot, six slot. But he describes the second missing or the six missing. That basically means you're doing something on uh, uh, every um, eighth row. It's not a dryer slot where you're doing something every quarter. And so I came up and I wrote this. Okay, well let me start right link. Uh, Robert Link's hint him one, one, two, three, four. And so he, this is the way to translate his long description of a word into a set of slaps. Uh, my dad started writing this a long time ago in the short hand, you know, in the 90s. But to explain what this is, right on um, our word, right hand, right side, etc. And uh, there's three letters, Robert Link's four in the front. And, um, but this is where you can translate his description of a sexual saga into slabs, give it into a measure. Um, and then there's other things, and I can read this whole long description right here. Um, again, double slab, right front, and, and uh, parenthesis, and R means with the right hand, and the right leg with the left, and then the behind slab, and then cross slabs, and then a sexual slug. What's measure one? <laughs> What's measure two? How do I translate this? And you know, I'm a big point, listen to the music. The music tells you how to put these things here. So if you look at here, that's a center slog, but the second ace of the missing. Ah. That's where that goes. I work backwards from the cross slaps. And then I figure out that Beyond this, what I do have, this double slot has to be in the last note of the force field, the last of the beat of the force field. So then I put this all together. I, this is the uh, Berkstone and Clinkle. Da 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 da. I finally, after studying this, figure out. Da 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 da. The music tells you how to match those slaps. What measure they go in? It really, really helped me translating a lot of different flowers. And um, so, um, how to do a tulsa sprung or what we now call oak sprung? Um, interesting for me to read his description. You know, the right hand makes a slap from the left on the inner side, and that's all. You know, like I said, I, I'm not. That old, they can't do this. I can hit over the top. But when I was 50 plus years ago, I was told to do a force, uh, a hoax rung. I was told slap on the inside. 100 years ago, Hans Lemming would say slap on the inside from the side. So I find, and you know, there's various ways of doing these things, but you know, here's you know, documentation that some of the things that don't go over the top. Hit the inside, swing from the side. Um, and he also describes, you know, knee fall and not in knee fall. You know, right now, you know, the, the word, you know, with knee fall meaning you're kneeling, you're clapping, and whatever else. So you also can do it without the uh, kneeling. Description on how to spin. And this is interesting that he, you know, says, you know, even during the stepping motion, he has the girls holding the corner of their apron and gently swaying. So what does it mean? And then there's other descriptions of how to do steps and, and everything else. And he has, you know, so what he wants people, the, the girls to do is, it's a lender step, but a slight movement as the left foot or the right foot is forward. And then very specific on keeping a nice belt. To keep a nice bell, small steps, feet stay close together, continuous spinning, get back to the continuous motion I've been talking about, you know, just keep, keep that. But then, you know, really says, you know, if your bell's lost later, it doesn't even rise, you know, saying, you know, describes the advanced steps to do that correctly. So um, I pointed out that a couple, we're going to come back to them in a minute. But there's a couple of things we have to kind of recognize that we're not necessarily doing now, but we're really part of Shoe Butler 100 years ago. And the notch again is the pickup sequence. And if I look at any of the plotters, the Hochsprung is often like in the fifth measure, which for us is real early. Because we're going to do a Hochsprung, go down and come up. 
Um, and the reason for this is to have the extended knock sheet and the extended pickup sequence, where he says the boy can show off to the girl. And, and so by showing off, claps, jumps, I, I don't think I ever seen it, but I've seen it in pictures, even the summers. Um, but you got to realize that this is just after lines are being formed. This is where maybe in a tavern, maybe in other locations, you would do something more showy. You're not playing up to the tourist. You're playing up to your friends and your um, partner or whatever. So th th this is um, certainly as things became more formalized for rhymes, you know, and then you've got larger groups. You can't really do some of this stuff. But when you're doing a nine soul or small groups, this is something that was um, you know, showing off as part of the, of the dance. And to give it time, they have an early coach going in all the dance inscriptions. Not necessarily what we do today, but you do it in the fifth, you kneel on the sixth, you get up, stamp. You got a full eight measures for the pickup sequence, so you can pick up on measure one of the limit. You also refer to this term, like Einlaufer and Auslaufer. Einlaufer is more like an Einlaufer that we talk about today. It is the uh, first, we can do the first 16 measures. The full bottler is when you do a 32 measure bottler, you do the full bottler to 16, but then you basically repeat the Einlaufer because of the Auslaufer. The second 16 measures of a 32 measure bottler. So, nice terminology in this book we can learn, historical ways of doing things. And one thing we have at the end, um, you know, an alternative, and you decide, you know, lots of times groups will end by kneel, or traditional ending where you kneel. But it also describes a, a swoosh figure, the ending figure, lifting up the girl. And so this is from the cover, it actually describes how you do that, lift up the girl. And so this one is, is um, from the Hans Hofer um, photo books, which is about 1940s or 50 vintage. Descriptions of a lot of styras and group dances. I have the instructions here. I'll get to those a little bit later. Here's a similar later picture version of where you're lifting up the girl at the end and of the kneeling. Again, show them off a bit. Bob? Yeah. Are there any other special skills the boy demonstrates to the girl? <laughs> you want to impress the girl. <laughs> yeah. I do have a question. Um, with the picking up with the girl, is that at least according to the book or from what you've studied, um, toward the end, or was it ever done during the dance at all? During the dance. So you would do the 16 measure of Plotler. You would do the Auslaufer, which is the same as the Einlaufer. That would be up until, um, yeah, as I said, Hochsprungen 5, maybe say for the Neil 8. And then you would have that 8 measures, the last 8 measures of the 32 measure Plotler, or that last 8 measures of the 16 Einlaufer to do the pickup. There are other, they, they mentioned a couple of different dances where you're following the girl. Um, yeah, some people do the Schlagermatz or like that, or the, you're, 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 you're following the girl and you know, they're, they're all spinning in one big circle versus turning them out. So if there are descriptions like that, I don't know if that helps. But. Thank you. I, I actually do have a serious question. Um, <laughs> the, uh, is there anything in there, is it still verboten or is it mentioned anywhere in the book about guys quote unquote taunting the girl with the, the little picks on the uh, of the dirndl when they're spinning or anything or is I, that I don't more think in this book per se in other books and I have a you know a lot of different things and, and, and actually what it says it is okay to lift the girl's front but only with your foot. Don't uh, use your hand. Okay. Seriously. I mean this is the proper etiquette for those types of things. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, um, and, and so, there's, there's taunting, and not really taunting, it's just the performance, you know, slaps, sprung, and so forth. So, all right, I've talked about a lot of general, you know, about the dances themselves. So, um, these are just a sample, they have a lot of, as I said, 16 modelers, um, Three Lendlers, um, Barsha Lendler, Walter Schiffler Lendler, and a few others. Um, Berkshire and Glickle was one of my favorites. When I had about a couple of uh, years of uh, uh, high school German under my belt, and basically, you know, it was 
you know, teen, late teens at the time. This is actually my first dance that I translated from this book here. And, um, and so, you know, from these old, and I got some newer copies, you know, from these old versions of, uh, that I had from my uh, dad, handed down from the Virtue Star, I would go and, and translate this dance. It's a really nice dance where there's two butlers being done simultaneously. 32 measures of butler, girls are spinning between um, the alternating others, half of the couples are lender, so girls are spinning between them. Then they switch. The others are doing the butler, and then the, uh, the, the others pick up the girls and they're um, doing it. So, I only sing I don't like specifically this dance came from this book. Very, very nice butler for a sequence. You want to be a little showy, but not just a standard butler. Nice, uh, and, you know, it's one of the alternatives to the work shown in the book they have. Um, there's two versions of Miro, Miro Polka, and the Mies von der Mühle. I had not seen this dance anywhere else in any of the books. I, it's a, uh, done in three quarter time, which is rare, you know, uh, Polka is done at two four time, the original Miro is done in um, the March on four four time. I found one other description of this, I'll talk about it later, but it's a very rare dance, and so some of these are rare dances. Some, right or wrinkle, we all know, a little different to spelling, pronunciation, and you know, there are four versions of it. And so, you know, what we basically know is one of the versions is in there, but it's in, you know, there are, so even back then, there was recognized there were many different versions of a plotter. And the Einlaufer, meaning the, you know, what you do to the first 16 measures, there was also the various descriptions of that. Well, you can do this or that. And so it's very interesting that they had all these alternatives to do some of these plotters. The Alto Schirschleier Lender, uh, very nice, simple figures. If you have a junior group with a lot of extra girls, very nice dance for that. Um, and sure, I really care for his version of the Schleier and Drag Schreier. The Hans Hofer books have a little simpler version. His version is very complex. So, uh, um, lots of nice figures, but it just, you know, it, it would take a lot more practice to do those, his version. So, but I translated if you want to pick up some of the figures. And then he also says in the book, there's many alternatives for these figures. He points out that, and, and that's even back then was known. So, many alternatives for the plotlers, for the figures. It gives you but something, a lot more material to work from. Next, please. <laughs> so, in uh, this little backstory, 1891 is the first for Christ Butler. So we're here, here for Christ Butler. This is the first one, and uh, I have a book over there um, that makes this reference. In 1925, Einzel Perra by Christ Butler. So at least by 1925, there was Einzel Christ Butler. Earliest reference I've seen of Einzel Preisbottler is in this book. And he gave a very difficult dance to do. Yeah. <laughs> to look at the translation, the risk of over-exertion is undeniable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please, you know, if you want to take a look at what the original book looks like, please 
thumb through one of the scan copies I have in front, not my precious original. <laughs> or if you want to look at the uh, handful of copies I brought, that are for the full book I did, you look at those. But, yeah, uh, but I found the optical character recognition trained to the Fractor font. So I could scan these pages and get at least initial text out of them. I did a technical um, based uh, word processing called LaTeX. Uh, not that important. I could have done otherwise, but there's a couple of things you got to, you know, in original Fractor font, there's no bold or italics. So when they emphasize something, they space out the letters. One and a half spacing, whatever. And you can do some of that, but you know, this is the type of thing where, you know, this is a technical um, word processing um, program I use. I, I could do, you know, sign things like that and do that. Um, music engraving, so all the redone music, I use a program called Lilicon. Um, and what's nice about it is because I can now put a mini file and then translate that, so I can then actually get to an MP3 I can listen to. And the good thing about it is, what a good way to double check it. I play the music, I said, oh, I made a mistake here. Let me go fix that. But it, was, it was a good double check. And this information around myself, why I'm so technical and work for general dynamics information technology, long-term computer geek, I got a PhD from Caltech, whatever. Um, but, you know, folk dancing, since I could walk, my dad founded the group two years before I was born. Um, so anyway, so the way I, reason that I could put some of these things together, um, anyway, probably nobody, if, if you know anybody really interested in how I did like the music, for example, I might be the prime example, you can send them to me. Next. Just want to show some of the um, uh, music notation here. Um, one interesting phrase used because that's all the time. And yeah, stanza, maybe period of music is the most standard translation, but it varies depending on the music. If the lender repeat sequence is 16 measures, a stand, uh, I guess that's all 16 measures. If the lender repeat sequence is 8, it's 8. And actually, in the stutter and dry stutter, he says, you know, watch out, this is a, when, when I say you can do something for one gazette or at the end of the gazette transition, you got to know that's eight measures. And, and so that um, is a bit of uh, a challenge. And the other interesting thing, about five of the plotlers have a special lender. So the, you know, da 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 we play almost to all our lenders, uh, to all our plotlers, this one lender. It has specific lenders. And most of them are 60 measures long. It's just interesting that they would match the original. And that's because, you know, they're paired, they're, they're very, nicely paired to the music. And, um, and uh, this, uh, there's various sequences in here where you know, under one you do these figures, under two you do those figures, do the bottler, and this, uh, the part four is really spell this out to so more of a danceable form versus, you know, his notes of what to go to next. Um, I have a, so I mentioned, you know, here's three versions, my old photocopies my dad was given 65 years ago, the original version of the book I found, my updated book. But um, I tried to really found um, original descriptions. So I didn't look up, you know, terms, dance terms, um, you know, stride them, you know, other types of steps, and find other references. I have some of these here, a lot from my dad. Um, and a few others I found myself over the years. Um, again, if you haven't seen these before, take a look. These are the Hans Hofer picture books. Stutterers, dry stutterers, um, Kronentons. My, my, my dad talked to Kronentons in our group for the first time in 1960, based on these descriptions here. You get a little description here. And yeah, here's some ancient translations falling <laughs> <laughs> out here. And from the looks at an ancient translation by my uh, grandmother in her script. <laughs> but yeah, and I have some of these other books here, but th th these are really things I cross references to. And I want to put one video on this list. You try to teach a young four-pot nowadays, oh, okay, well, you have 
have a video of it. And I have to claim that my dad probably took the first video of a prize baller, 1963, four years before the first cow, uh, first cow fest, uh, in Buffalo. Eight millimeter, black and white film. Well, it's one of the things I used in our evidence for our um, uh, National Endowment of the Arts grant. That we you know, record this history, we republish those things, we, we keep that history of just what's being done you know, in our last 50, 60 years, not just, you know, and then trying to use these references. So actually, some of these references, I created the, most of the documentation for an NAA grant. Video, going back to 1963 to three years ago, um, and written documentation. Now, I said there's only one video listed in here. You can find them. Go search for yourself. The only one I listed was the Mieslaw Kahuna, because that's the only other representation of that one dance I found that, you know, me arrived on three quarter time. And, and so that's the one. But, anyways, the, the you know, Dance Stella, a German folk dance site, very informative, a number of things from there. Um, and then, you know, there's references to different uh, dances, and then all these are all the dances in those photo books over there. All right, next place. So, this is a summary that where I wanted to get this out for this cow fest. The original German, um, pretty much almost identical with the original book. There's a couple of cases where I decided, no, he made a mistake. <laughs> Very rarely, and I spell that out in the Arado, saying, you know, well, you know, and it could be something simple where he says, you know, do a double slap. Hit this leg with your right hand and hit that thigh with your right hand. I can't do a double slap both with the right hand. It had to be wrong. <laughs> All right, what is this? Um, there was one Lindler that had 15 measures. And no matter how hard I tried, I could not, the dance description was 16 measures. All right. It had to be a mistake in the musical engraving. Let me add the 16th measure. Let me redo it a bit. So, anyways, the uh, German translation, I mean, the original German, and I point out every single change I made, because I didn't want to, you know, everybody has different opinions, you know, or, you know, oh, that was a mistake. You can't do it this way. I can't do it. Double slap with both of the right hand, but maybe some of the other things I assumed were a little different. Um, general instructions I think are very useful, and then the uh, you know the way the um, Margareta Fleming, the soon widow of Hans Fleming, you know presented this. You, know, you want to preserve shoe polish, so this is the way I also want to do. And what do I want to do with this book? Um, I'm going to get around to self-publishing this so people can buy physical copies they want, but I, I uh, did post the uh, PDF to the Gaffer One website. So, next page. Um, it's a Google Drive, a little long, but just go to gafferbond.com and down. Right now, it's about the fourth link down. Um, workshop on over by Irish Shoe Baller. Please go to there. If, uh, any discussion or we have corrections. I, I made a, a mistake in my uh, transcription. I, there's a better translation. Any suggestions? BobAbomleys.us. If you like to, um, um, yeah, I spent a lot of time on this. Let me go to the next slide. This is basically my uh, family. I talked about my dad here. I'm at our dance the Corona Town Center 50th. And um, Father's Day week, he's too old to be 93 years old, couldn't make it this weekend. But I, Father's Day weekend went up and visited him. And I just was very, showed him the dedication, which is to him, and, and um, showed him the, a lot of the book. That's a lot of work. <laughs> I was really appreciative that he appreciated <laughs> the amount of time it takes to translate 25 dances and give all the instructions, do the music. But I just want to point out the history of this and my family of this book. My dad, getting this from George Bruce Power for Bein' um, working with some of the descriptions, but you know, Donnelly, or it's an Irish 
version and um, you know and with my uh, you know, but with my uh, mom Bob and Joe Donnelly and Bill Murray Fisher found an antivirus mistake so he had three good German support there but also my uh, grandmother our uh, drug mother among other things um, helped them do translation so when I say yeah there's some uh, in, the, in, the, in this thing you know some of the old pages I got from the She helped them do the translations. My grandfather, our first um, ALS Pacific musician, accordion, but also famous bell ringer, um, performed in a lot of different places, but you know, he helped with the music. And my family on the far right, but it's really, you know, at least three generations have used some of this material and helped with the translation and putting it into practice and to dance. So with that, thank you. I uh, wanted to get through a little early, got 15 minutes, and I would be happy to discuss anything more, take any questions, see if there are other material that other people use, or just go back to any of the topics I covered. So please. Do you have the video? Do you have a copy of the video that you were talking about? So um, we posted four videos, uh, three videos, Three videos um, that are NEA grant videos. I don't have them with me, but on the Ada Weiss Mistake YouTube channel, you can get and see the, the videos we submitted for NEA grant. Cool. And um, again, the various things. Um, this might be also a venue for some of the uh, dancers from this weekend. Thank you. Yeah, it's 
what's a, you know, how do you, you know, and, and, and certainly, you know, you, the difference between a waltz and a lender. I mean, the lender predates a waltz, and, and, and lender from the land, from the country, you know, it, it's really the first dance that came from, that became popular from standard, you know, uh, you know, not from the courts, it was always, you know, from the, the royal courts, from the ballrooms down, this is a dance that went there. When it became popular, it was more of a waltz, as, you know, the form of that, but you know, the lender's the predecessor of the waltz. And so that's almost a variation, but you know, again, the pivot step, the differences. Did you cover in your books on it? What's that? Did the line, the scripts of the line books, did you cover in your So there are three, I did not go, I really reproduced what was in the books as far as content. There are three lenders. Ultra Sears, a Sawyer Landler, a Byersha Landler, and the third one I can't think off the top of my head. So, and then they're fairly simple, you know, uh, you know, spinning, you know, noodle beckon, uh, you know, a couple of simple figures, Steyr and Dreisteyr, which, you know, again, he's all done the London. You have two Plotler, the Plotler's a London. Um, so, there, there are a few in there I really didn't go into beyond what was in the book. Let me ask you, are there other people who really delved into some of these older documents, or no? The old book from from um, oh, I think that's the Sun Shire, right? That's a good yeah. one that captures a lot of the stuff in the picture book. Um, the book by Hans Fleming, of course, is uh, is fascinating. Yeah. Um, there was actually a nice collection of dance descriptions that um, Mark LaForce found when he was at Alpha Club yeah. that has snippets uh, from a lot of different sources uh, yeah. that covers a whole, whole bunch of blogs. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there are references to that. I mean, this is the um, Geschichte des Tanzes in Deutschland, and this is, you know, this is a reprint. Yeah. Was in, yeah, this is the original copy. Um, and then and there are, in some of these books, the general folk dances books, there are pieces of law, they're not very extensive. Um, you know, uh, only three or four plot letters in this thing, but it's, it's part of a series. But, you know, chapter 21 is on Yeah, <laughs> nice. Can we come take a peek at Yes. And, and then, so if we're done, thank you, Jen, you can turn off the video. And you can take a peek, just don't touch my original 200 year old, 100 year old copy. That's about it. <laughs> That's amazing. I'll call it thank you.